name is Pamela Wamala. Welcome to my studio. Uh, my studio here is at the Brush Art Gallery and Studios in Lowell, Mass. We're part of the National Park Visitor Center here in Lowell, right in downtown. I'm a painter. I paint with pastels and oils. Mostly I do landscapes, but I also venture into abstraction and semi-abstraction, and I have a wonderful time with my work. When I was a child, I spent a lot of time with my maternal grandfather up in Auburn, Maine. His name was Walter Stevens. And starting at about five years old, my mom tells me, I started painting with him, which I remember painting with him. I didn't remember how old I was. I had to ask her. But I was five, and we would spend time doing landscape paintings, mostly in acrylic at that point, and we would spend hours painting together. He passed away just two or three years ago at almost 98 and he spent most of his life in his own home and uh, only went into an assisted living facility for the last few years and painted a lot, almost every day, up until nearly the end of his life. And he, I think, when he was in that nursing home up in Maine, I think he gave somewhere like 40 paintings away just because it gave him great joy. So he kept that as a part of his life for up until the end, which I uh, find very inspiring. These three pieces are in a group of um, pastels that I call homage, vintage homage, because they're, they're capturing a, a landscape but using the palette of vintage photography from years ago, which I just love those colors. So I did some research online uh, looking at photographs that use, utilize that um, palette of, of hand-colored photographs and came up with a palette to use to create a body of work. So there are many works. This is just three of them. And I uh, wanted to capture the light, but use that palette to, to do it. I was lucky enough to grow up in a time when they had art in schools. I know that varies from place to place, but I did have art in school, and it was wonderful. Lots of different experiences. My high school art teacher, Mrs. Wilson, I remember as being one of my, my favorite art teachers. And she, I would like other kids hang out wherever they hang out in high school, that was the place where I would hang, hang out at lunchtime and where, whenever I could be in the art room, I was in the art room. Even though I was a good student and, you know, all the honor society, math, honor society, Spanish, all that, but I, I loved art and uh, it was always my place of refuge and peace. And then moving on to college, um, I was nervous about being able to make an income as an artist. So I started out as a psychology major in college and um, gradually shifted to psychology and art, thinking I would have an art therapy career. <clears throat> but as I got to know myself more and think about who I am, I <clears throat> realized that I'm a very sort of absorbent person and I wasn't sure that being a therapist was a good fit for me personally as a lifestyle choice. And also the amount of school that I would have to have seemed a little daunting to become a you know, full-fledged therapist. It takes a lot of schooling. So I gradually morphed from psychology to art therapist to studio fine artist as my major with art history and women's studies and psychology as minors. So I ended up graduating with a bachelor in bachelor's in fine art in drawing and painting. This is Meditation on the Sea. And I've done many paintings based on an evening that I had on the beach with my folks in Florida. And they live about five minute drive from uh, a beach in Florida, which is just beautiful. And I especially uh, like the beach either earlier in the morning or when the sun is going down because of the way the light is changing so rapidly. Because the, the, the tiny particles of pastel leave a little bit of uh, edge to them, those edges catch the light in a way that's uh, different from other mediums. So I was exposed to a lot of Renaissance painters and all different painters. But the ones that I hold with me today, I would say would be Rothko uh, for his peaceful and simple interpretations of color and how that makes me feel. And also John Singer Sargent. I love the texture that he incorporated into his artwork. Hopper, again, for the peacefulness in his work. He has a lot more content in his work. but his paintings come across as, to me, very at peace, which is a major mission that I have with my work, and it, not really consciously at this point, it just sort of has evolved to be that. Oh, Picasso, of course, because I have a nice memory of Picasso when I was in third grade. I think he was the first artist that I did a book report of. And uh, when I was in Paris about 
eight, ten years ago, I was able to go to the Picasso Museum and see many, many of his works and, and be influenced by him in a, in a deeper way. <clears throat> and one more artist I shouldn't leave out is Degas, because the, the amazing pastelist that, that he was. And it was when I was in Paris as well that I was able to go and see a lot of his paintings and be in a room filled with his paintings with very low light. And it was such an intimate, wonderful uh, environment. I chose pastels as my major form of art and medium at this point for the last, well, since, since 2000, um, no, since 1999, actually. Um, I had had a break from doing my art because I was mothering for many years and just didn't have time to fit in my art. And then slowly I began to realize that I needed to make time for myself and for my art as a big part of who I am. And uh, through that process, I took a year to play with different mediums, colored pencil, acrylic, watercolor. I didn't feel that I had an adequate setup in my home to incorporate oil, so I, I had left that out of the mix for the time being. But sanded pastel paper was the closest I could find to that experience because pastels, soft pastels, high quality ones, not the ones we used as kids in school, but the ones that are professional grade, they're very... Um, buttery and and they're mostly pigment and very very little binder so instead of having all the other ingredients that are mixed into a tube of paint it's not that it's very little of that and it's mostly color pigment which is why people so often comment about pastel paintings being so rich in, in color this piece is from my on the green suite which was inspired by an evening walk on a golf course of all places and uh, I probably painted 30 or more paintings uh, from this, starting with this uh, inspiration point. People really respond uh, to the mystery of it, I guess. They, they know, they think they know where it is and, and what it is, but the, the palette is intriguing and the colors. When I started painting with my grandfather when I was five, I was very much about capturing as close as I could as a young person and then through working with him all the way through high school, uh, it, being very representational with my work. And people will still look at my work and sometimes they'll think one of my pastels is a photograph. So I suppose that means it's representational. But to me, that's not what I'm after. That's not my goal. My goal is more about capturing a feeling about a place through color and composition. So I would say it evolved from having a goal of capturing and trying to have something look like something in the landscape and it has evolved to be more capturing a feeling about a place or a feeling that I have inside myself about a place and sharing that with others through my work. I think there are a lot of ways that I contribute to the artist community here in Lowell. Uh, the first one is that I have my studio here at the Brush Art Gallery and Studios as part of the National Park. We have 13 studios here, 13 different artists, as well as other artists that we represent in the hallway and then shows that happen in the gallery. So that's part of being here is that we're open to the public five to six days out of the week throughout the whole entire year. We do events year-round. We are part of the um, largest free folk festival that happens in the country. We have hundreds and hundreds of visitors come visit through here on that weekend, which is the last full weekend in July, if you ever want to come to that. Um, we also have quilt festival and lots of other events that happen here throughout the year. So that's one, one piece of it. Another thing that I do to benefit the community is I started a program called the Elder Art Initiative uh, in 2009 where I and um, Carol Bolio and Nancy Wormwood, two artist friends of mine, go into local nursing homes and we do art workshops. And mostly it centers around um, creating one-of-a-kind greeting cards through collage. So it's a very accessible medium for people with nearly no limitations to many, many limitations. We've worked with blind people and you know people with dementia, uh, Anyone is welcome, and we fill in for whatever um, lack they might have in terms of physical capability. So that's another big way that I feel I'm contributing um, in this community. These three pieces are from a group of nine that I did uh, from the Voyage Suite, 
and they all experiment with different kinds of textures and ways of working in other textures along with the pastel. So I'm working with fiber paste and glass bead gel medium and sand and depending on which painting you're looking at it will definitely have at least one other kind of texture or medium mixed in and used with the pastel. And also using the, the uh, vintage pastel, vintage photography, uh, hand colored photography palette in this group. Because we are open to the public, it's important that artists who are uh, juried into our group of, our small group of 13 artists have to enjoy being um, part of educating the public because that's one of our missions here as artists. We need to love talking with folks and, and meeting people. So that's, and since I love it, this studio is a great fit for me. So I, I really enjoy meeting people and talking to them about my work and about their experience of Lowell and, and telling them more about Lowell when they're here, not just my work, but other things they can do in Lowell. Actually, a few people have told me that um, I'm one of the first people that they met when they visited Lowell, and I was one of the reasons why they moved to Lowell, which is, I've had two or three people tell me that in the last couple of years, which was like a very nice compliment. And um, I hear a lot of nice stories about how my art touches people's lives. Um, some people haven't bought a piece yet, and that's fine, but I have a very large mailing list, so I send postcards out uh, probably two to four times a year. And I've had several people tell me that they have my postcards, you know, plastering their fridge, which is fun to hear. Um, and of course, I have a lot of collectors as well who have bought my work and, and invite me into their home and show me their work, which is wonderful to uh, see them enjoying it in their home and hear them tell me what their friends, how they, their friends react to it and what peace it brings to them. I've had stories of people telling me that they place it in their living room or their bedroom in a place where they'll see it all the time because it's meaningful to them and they, and they engage with the work and it brings them happiness or peace in some way. I think what's unique about my art and what people respond to is an element of peacefulness that they feel when they look at my work. That, that is the most common um, compliment because I take it as a very high compliment because I think we need more peace in the world and I love being part of that and, and people uh, seeing that in my work is, is a great compliment to me. I think the biggest challenge is when there are dry times from paint, for painting sales um, because I am a full-time artist. Um, I supplement my income by, uh, by the program I developed, the Elder Art Initiative, which brings art to elders in nursing homes. And I get a small income from that, and that's a regular sort of monthly income. But other than that, I'm a full-time artist and depend on painting sales. So that can be a bit of a roller coaster ride uh, when, when things are quiet. And then, uh, inevitably, it will pick up again, and, and uh, I you know, have sweated out another one. <laughs> but definitely uh, cash flow, I would say, is, uh, is one of the challenges. You know, printing postcards, postage, keeping in touch with my um, mailing list, but all those things are expenses that need to be covered. I think the message I would have to focus on for aspiring artists is to seek your own personal, I mean, look for influences and be attentive to things that attract you in your surrounding, whether you're traveling or at home. Be aware of, of what you're curious about or excited about and see if it makes sense to incorporate that excitement or uh, enthusiasm into the work that you choose to do because then your work will be very personal and uh, exciting for you to, to create and for people to respond to. Two future goals that I have um, that I'm working toward is a, a solo show at the Whistler House Museum of, of Art here in Lowell and uh, a two-person show that will be here at the Brush Art Gallery and Studios, and both of the, with uh, Steve Nori and the photographer. So both of those shows are in the next five years or so, so those are big goals for me to be working on new work. Thank you for visiting my studio. It's nice to have you.